Makima is the embodiment of Chainsaw Man. What do I even mean when I say a sentence like that? Well, honestly, I had no clue how to start the video off, so I wanted to try and sound smart, but in all seriousness, I do mean it. Chainsaw Man is very hard to describe. To this day, there are still fans debating about what genre the series even is. One side thinks it's a shonen, another side thinks it's a shonen with seinen-like tendencies, another thinks it's a straight up seinen, and others think it's a complete acid trip of a manga. Pick a side. Yet despite the nature of this series being so hard to pin down, I feel like no other character really represents or embodies Chainsaw Man's appeal more than Makima. Let me ask you all a question. When you first think of Makima, what are the first things that come to your mind? Is it the dummy mommy attitude? The big ass? The barking? That's exactly what I mean! On the surface, Makima sounds wild and inappropriate, just like Chainsaw Man in general. But beneath all of that lies a sad and desperate character, struggling with everything she's got to try and find happiness. Just like how the series itself showcases and explores much more down-to-earth and meaningful topics with its characters. A lot of people like to point out the horny when it comes to Chainsaw Man, and I'm here today to show you that it's not just horny, it's horny and deep. And there's no better way for me to prove that than by talking about the woman who embodies it all, Makima. Now, before we get started, I should probably explain the title, huh? Makima has a talk with the Yakuza, who claim that they are a necessary evil for the people of Japan. They say that they protect the Japanese people from foreigners, and yet the only thing we see them do on screen is hurt or betray the ones they're supposed to be helping. Katana Man's dad forced Denji to pay back his father's debt, killed a handful of women and children, and in the end, literally sold his soul to a devil, and he's supposed to be one of the good ones. The Yakuza are just straight up evil, hiding behind fancy sounding words and ideals. And it makes sense that their attacks wouldn't work on someone like Makima, because their actions are so short-sighted that compared to the actual necessary evils of the world, they mean nothing. She protects the people from foreign threats. She's keeping the people safe. She is everything that they claim to be. Makima is a necessary evil. Earlier I asked you all what first came to your mind when you thought of Makima, and for a lot of you, I'm willing to bet that it was dogs. But that term isn't just exclusively used by her. Plenty of others say it, from devils and even the Yakuza. But the most important are the higher-ups, who Makima reports to. In fact, considering how much of an effect they had on Makima growing up, she probably took the term from them. While Makima refers to others as dogs, she is seen as a dog herself. In her own words, she's kept collared and controlled by the state. The higher-ups are also the ones who tell her to not get attached to any of the dogs she has at her command. In turn, she doesn't really like being around them and prefers being around the dogs that they told her not to grow so fond of. Everything I described just now is the makeup of a sympathetic character. Someone who is forced to do wrong and doesn't like it, but still tries to put up with it for the sake of protecting innocent lives. So even if she does show a darker side, of her personality, we can forgive her because there's a reason behind it. Even if she seems cruel to her allies, we can forgive her because we know that she actually does like them. If you take a look at every major antagonist in the series and compare them to Makima, she has at least one thing in common with all of them. And it's not something simple like, oh, do you see these two women? They're actually similar because believe it or not, they're both women. I know, I know, right? Thank you. Make sure you subscribe for more analysis like this. It's on a deeper and much more personal level than that. Take for example, Santa Claus. She and Makima are practically identical in a couple of categories. Both are able to control or manipulate others against their will. Both are able to pass their pain on to others. Santa threatens Denji with the idea of transforming one of his friends or family into an enemy and sending them to kill him. 
Makima actually does that. Santa wants Quan Chi to become her slave. Makima does that too. She's essentially a perfected version of Santa, which is a weird sentence now that I say it out loud. Despite all of that though, we can still overlook it because she's a necessary evil. Her having things in common with bad people is only a given. But Santa doesn't just hate Makima out of jealousy though. Once again, it's deeper than that. She calls Denji a dog that ignorantly wags his tail for Makima and also goes on to say that she's going to end Makima's dream, but like, why would you want to do that? Makima's goal has and still is to help humanity and make a better world for them. She's not doing it in the nicest way possible, yeah, but the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Plus, she's only hurting the people around her. Why would you come from overseas and get involved in something that wouldn't affect you otherwise? But then the President of the United States says that it would involve everybody. Because if she has her way, Makima would bring about the worst kind of peace for mankind. What is it about her purely selfless intentions that make it so that everyone wants to kill her for them? That's because her intentions aren't purely selfless. They're actually purely selfish. Her goal is to bring peace for humanity. But what exactly is Makima's dream? Denji asked Makima a question about dreams, and even though it's a dream about touching tits, it's a surprisingly mature question. His goal was to feel up on some lady melons, and once he finally did, he felt nothing. No pleasure, no satisfaction, just nothing. He wonders if things will always be like this, if there's even a point to chasing after dreams if he's just going to be left feeling unfulfilled each time. It's then where Makima tells him that naughty things feel better the more you get to know your partner. But understanding someone's heart can be hard, so it's best to understand them physically first. She does have a point, I mean we can see as much from Denji's reaction, but eventually the heart will long for a much more intimate connection. At first, Denji is happy with just having the bare minimum in his life, but soon goes through a period of believing that he's lost his heart ever since Puchita died, because he wouldn't feel all too sad about anyone else around him dying. Makima included, and the thought of that bothers him. Denji sticks around Makima not because she let him cop a feel, but because of the idea of starting an actual relationship with her. How many times have we seen him declare that he'll make it through something so that they could go on their date? He genuinely loves Makima, but it's because he wants something more and she gives him so little that he's easily tempted. He's tempted to have sex with Himino. He falls in love with Reese because they build that intimate relationship with each other. And for a moment, he even puts her above Makima when he asks if she wants to run away with him. Knowing someone physically does help, for sure, but connecting heart to heart is just as, if not even more important. Because even if you're close to someone, that doesn't always mean that naughty things will suddenly feel good if you do it with them. Denji spends a majority of his time around power, but feels nothing when they bathe together or when she has her legs wrapped around him like this. You don't just fall in love with anyone. It's a very special thing. Let's take a look back at Makima and Denji's interaction. Denji is learning what Makima's body is like, which leads to him touching her chest and falling over out of shock. During this scene, Makima is also coming to know Denji's body though. She's figuring out how his palms feel, if they're warm or cold, how his fingers taste, how his hands feel touching her chest, and yet she isn't nearly as embarrassed about it. In one of the most intimate interactions we've seen in the series, it's now Makima who feels nothing. It could just be that she doesn't like Denji like that. After all, I went on a whole tangent about not falling in love with just anybody. And the answer is... Sorta? It's not like she doesn't like Denji, it's that she can't. Because she's the control devil, she's only capable of forming relationships with others through fear. The reason why Makima looks unbothered in this situation isn't that she's confident or something, it's because she literally does not feel anything from doing this. She's only capable of being the dominant one in relationships, forcing others to do her bidding. Fujimoto even has Makima sitting slightly above Denji and not equally with him. As much as Denji wants it, 
They can't ever see eye to eye, because a position of power is all Makima has ever known. Yet Makima does want to fully understand emotions and the heart of someone else. Each time she manipulates people into falling for her, it's a reminder of what she doesn't have. It's no wonder that she makes pretty much everyone she manipulates or control fall in love with her. It shows how desperate she is to break her cycle of dominion and form this sort of connection in a pure and honest way, which is why she's willing to do anything to get it. All the way back in chapter 12, before you even realized it, you've just been introduced to the core struggles of Makima's character. And you found out about him in a scene where the main character touches her tits for a couple seconds. Say it with me now, everybody. Chainsaw Man isn't just horny, it's horny and deep. deep. See, now you're getting it. So Makima's dream is to be able to form an equal relationship with others. Something like a family, which is why Uchida and by association, Denji were so important to her. Makima can control anyone who she believes to be weaker than her. And considering how powerful she is, her power could work on a lot of people without having to do anything. At the most, she would need to beat someone in combat before she can use her ability. And like I said, she's very strong. Maybe not the strongest, but she's up there. My point is, there aren't a lot of people who could avoid being controlled by Makima, but Chainsaw Man was a different story. He's the devil that devils fear the most. He's the strongest, which is why she worshipped him. It's why even after she declares that she wants to create a better world with his power, she never really talks about doing that sort of thing ever again after that. She has a smile on her face while she fights Chainsaw Man, even as she's being overpowered by him, like she's in sheer awe of his ability. She doesn't get frustrated at the fact that she's struggling to beat him. She gets frustrated at the fact that he refuses to eat her. Because even if she were to lose, she would still get her wish of becoming one with or being equal to him. This is a rare time where Makima can form an actual connection with someone, and that someone is rejecting her. That has to be irritating. Makima isn't happy when she thinks that Puchita turned back into Denji during the final battle. She's so close to getting what she wants and Denji just keeps getting in the way of that. So since she worships Chainsaw Man so much, she views all of her actions to get to this point in an almost heroic way. I mean, she pretty much gaslights Denji into believing that he deserved all of the bad things that happened to him. He has no right to be happy after everything he's done. After all, he's killed the people closest to him. It's his fault, and now he has to pay for his sins. Denji is just someone who doesn't understand Chainsaw Man. He isn't worthy of that power. He just ended up with it. She knows him best out of anyone. She knows who he is and what he wants, and she is going to free him no matter what it takes. Basically, Makima views her actions as a necessary evil. Remember how I mentioned that Makima didn't like what she was doing, but did it anyway because it was for the good of the people? Yeah, that was a lie, because Makima is a liar. She lies constantly to both the higher-ups above her and the people who work underneath her. She acts like she didn't know the attack on Special Division 4 was going to happen, when it's heavily implied that she did. After all, it's not like a lot gets past her. She can hear everything, so the odds of her not knowing about it are pretty low. She lies to the higher-ups about how the Yakuza got their guns from the Gun Devil, when later on we figure out that those guns were actually made by man. She lies about wanting more news coverage on Special Division 4, because she She's been the one who's been enforcing media restrictions on them the entire time. The higher-ups don't even have a clue as to why Denji is important. Even though she's fighting for them and their cause, they have no idea about the potential of Chainsaw Man or why other countries want him. Nothing and it's all because of Makima. So while it's true that she doesn't like being around the higher-ups, her acting like she doesn't take any pleasure in what she's doing just is not true. During the Bomb Girl arc, Reese asks Denji if he prefers the town mouse or the country mouse. The one in the town gets to eat delicious food, but has a greater chance of dying, while the one in the country doesn't have as good of food, but it lives a much longer life. The point of this question is to ask if you prefer to live fast and die young or live a long and uneventful life in peace? Makima gives her own answer to this question at the end of the arc. She prefers the country mouse because she enjoys 
killing it. Now, I'm sure that this is something that actual farmers have to do to preserve their crops in the fall and winter seasons. I don't doubt that. But for the question of town mouse versus country mouse, the country mouse represents peace. And not only does Makima trample on the peace of others, she also enjoys doing it. Since she's seen as a necessary evil either way, she acts like she's above any sort of consequences. She's untouchable. After all, how can you tell someone whose goal is to solve all of humanity's problems that they're wrong? How can you tell someone that their dream of freeing their loved one from captivity is wrong? It's kinda hard to do, and it's like Makima knows that and takes advantage of it. She doesn't feel bad about lying to anyone, and she enjoys killing people or bringing them over to her side through control. She throws the words of her enemies right back at them before she beats them just to mess with them even more. In one of my favorite chapters in the series, Quan Chi and the Fiend's 49-person massacre, Pinksty tells a devil hunter in Chinese that she sees a corpse talking seconds before he dies. And at the end of the arc, as Quan Chi surrenders to Makima and asks her not to target the fiends, Makima doesn't say anything other than, a corpse is talking seconds before she decapitates all of them. She also does it to Reese in the scene I brought up earlier. We've seen her help Denji build a family around himself and find peace, only to rip it away from him and laugh about it. And that's the reason why Makima would have brought about the worst possible peace if she were to have won. It would hardly be peaceful to begin with. The Chainsaw Devil would normally kill everything in its path, and Makima loves him for that. So who's to say she wouldn't just let him run wild throughout the world while she sits back and watches? Even if she kept him in check, she wants to use him to create a perfect world. Which sounds good at first, until you realize what that means. She would keep getting rid of more and more bad things until there'd be nothing left. And at that point, can you even consider that living anymore? You can't die, you'll never feel bad again, meaning eventually you probably won't even feel happy anymore since you can't feel anything else. The world wouldn't become peaceful, it would just become a reflection of how Makima has always felt. We would all just exist. We wouldn't have a goal we could push towards like before, and neither would Makima at that point. Which is why I think Denji decided he'd have to kill her after she said she'd get rid of bad movies. Because not being perfect is what makes life so much more interesting. A theme of Quan Chi's character was that ignorance is bliss. It was what allowed her to get through things and allowed Makima to manipulate people. But in Denji's talk with Kobeni, it's like a new perspective was added Added to this statement. Ignorance is bliss not because of how it helps you or how it helps you control others. Ignorance is bliss because look at how much life there is to live. There is no such thing as a life without bad things. That is nothing to be ashamed of. That's normal. Us not being perfect is what helps us grow as people and helps us think even bigger than we did before. Imagine if you just knew everything. You just had everything in your mind. You didn't learn anything. Then you would never feel the satisfaction of realizing that toast with jam and butter every morning, yeah, that's cool, but what about steak every morning instead? Wouldn't that be great? Or imagine instead of just having one girlfriend, why not an entire harem? Imagine waking up to that every day. That sounds amazing, right? There is so much to life that you don't know about and that's the best part about it. So keep learning, keep growing, keep living. Makima may be disappointed with this answer, but at the end of the day, what was the one thing she was chasing after this entire time? Imperfection absolute chaos, the destruction of all order in her life, Chainsaw Man, the hero to Makima's own personal hell. And the sad thing is, 
no matter how hard Makima tries, she'll never get what she wants thanks to how her power works and what it does to her. Like I mentioned earlier, her power works by controlling people she thinks to be lesser than herself. The further removed she is from the rest of the world, the more powerful she becomes, meaning the only way she can gain the strength to fulfill her dream of connecting with people is by disconnecting with them. And so at times, Makima seems so out of touch with the rest of the world, it's almost scary. Like her enjoyment of killing the country mouse, or her claiming that humans love her when the history of mankind says otherwise. Makima is stuck either chasing after something that she can't reach, like a dog chasing its tail, or if she did end up actually getting it, she wouldn't know what to do with it like a dog chasing cars. Because how do you suddenly connect with someone when all you've done is disassociate yourself with everyone to get here? This isn't even mentioning that by controlling Chainsaw Man, she'd be getting rid of the things that she worshiped about him in the first place. But you know, despite how far removed she was from everybody, Makima was still pretty close to understanding people. Her conversation with Denji after the welcome party is very similar to the talk that he and Kobeni have towards the end of the series. She's got a lot in common with a lot of people and she has someone who will love her no matter what she does. Which is why it's so heartbreaking to know that she would have never come to that conclusion on her own in her life as Makima. But what would you do in this situation? Would you chase after that last chance and hope you can make something of it, or would you just accept that it's pointless? Do the ends always justify the means? Would having everything mean that you have everything that you want? These are questions that we as readers have to think about. Because Chainsaw Man isn't just horny. It's horny and deep. Thank you for watching. That's the video. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. This was easily the hardest video I have ever had to make so far, so hopefully I was able to do Makima the justice that she deserves. I don't know if you guys can hear a difference, but I actually ended up getting a new microphone in my hiatus. Hopefully this improves the quality of videos going forward, because I feel like I can play around with my voice on this mic a bit more than I could on the last one, you know? Also, before I go, um, we somehow managed to hit 2k while I was gone. What? Thank you guys so much for still putting up with me. I, I, I know the upload schedule has gotten pretty bad, but uh, anyway, it still means a lot to see our community growing like this. Thank you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart. I know I say it a lot, but I mean it, bitch. I love you. Hopefully, the next video will take a shorter time to get out, but plans never <laughs> they never work out for me when i want to post a video so i'm not about to make a promise i can't keep speaking of the next video though i have said that it's going to be a ruby one but i've never specified on what the topic was going to be so the next video is going to be it's going to be cinder fall my thoughts on her character after volume 8 i am big excited to get to work on that i have just been thinking about ruby ever since i watched it i bought the world of ruby book i'm reading it i'm thinking about it i i'm just excited to talk about ruby with you all and hopefully you guys are excited to hear me listen to it <clears throat> i meant talk about it don't make fun of me so stay on the lookout for that it shall be appearing in your sub box <laughs> sometime soon <laughs> make sure to like the video if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new God, it's been so long since I've done my outro. I almost forgot how it went. Anyway, before I mess up, I shall catch you guys later. Stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye.